Welcome to the city. I'm Anthony Wilson, the Public Information Officer for the City of San Angelo. And joining us today is the General Manager of Republic Services, Ray Grothhouse, and he is here to talk about the new services, the new trash pickup services that we'll be offering here in San Angelo, including curbside recycling. Ray, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me, Anthony. Now, you did a presentation, or uh, some Republic officials did a presentation for the City Council on March 17th, talking about the launching of the new trash pickup services, which will be automated, and that will include curbside recycling. Tell us when those new services will actually take effect. The, the new services will begin in um, July. We're still waiting on a little bit of a hard date from Butch Recycling as to when they can accept the recyclables. That's a pretty important component to, to the implementation um, or the start date um, is when they're fully, uh, fully established and able to accept the material. And just for clarification, Butch Recycling will actually be doing the sorting and the processing of the recyclables that you'll be collecting. That is correct. That is correct. So before we get into the details of how all of these new services are, are going to work, I know that you had hoped and we had hoped that you would be offering these new services at a much earlier date, but talk a little bit about some of the hurdles that Republic has had to clear in order to get to the point where you could be begin delivering these new services. Sure, yeah, the new contract went into effect August 1st. Um, from that point, we had to order 12 new trucks. <clears throat> Those trucks come off an assembly line, so you've got time, time issues with that. Um, so we reserved the slots as soon as we could with the, the manufacturers, uh, ordering 62,000 carts. Um, so every home will get the two carts, um, which equals to 100 semi-loads of carts that we have to receive into San Angelo. Um, on top of that, with the butts uh, do, undergoing a massive renovation in order to um, accept the single stream materials um, is, is probably the larger part, you know, minus the trucks or the carts, that, that is a big, uh, big task for a small company like like buds. And they just won the regulatory approval to expand their facility and everyone sees the carts being assembled there uh, in the parking lot of uh, Sunset Mall. So uh, talk a little bit about when those carts will be delivered to homes. Okay. The, uh, the go live date will be in July. We, in the next coming days, we should know exactly what that date is. The rollout will take four to five weeks. When I say rollout, the carts will be delivered to every home within four to five weeks ahead of that rollout. Um, so to deliver to 30,000 homes, obviously some people will get them five weeks ahead, some people will get them just the one week prior. Um, but we should have every cart leading up with about five days to spare before that go live date. Now these are going to be 96 gallon carts. Every home is going to get two of them. Explain why each home gets two carts. Absolutely. Um, so each cart is going to be different colors um, and that's going to help uh, the driver and also the customer um, distinct which ones uh, are trash and which ones are recycling. Uh, recycling. So uh, that allows us to go through and collect the appropriate container um, uh, and, uh, and I guess your question was how, how big they are, just talk more about the carts? Or? Yeah, just, just talk a little okay. bit about how those are going to work. Okay, so it's a containerized city is what we're, or containerized uh, implementation is what we're going for, um, which is uh, all automated, right? So currently San Angelo is all a manual process where we go through with rear load trucks, emptying bag by bag from every house. Uh, this will allow an automated arm to, to service every resident, trash and recycling. So in other words, you won't any longer have men on the backs of, of trucks. These the the cans will be emptied into the truck via uh, some mechanical arms. That is correct. So will your customers begin using the new carts immediately upon receiving those, or are they going to need to wait until the go-live date in order to start using their new carts? We'd recommend they refrain from using them immediately just because the current system, the manual system with the guys on the back, is not designed to service those type of containers. Um, it isn't exactly safe or, or um, effective um, for them to do that. So uh, there will be tags on there telling them you know, uh, to, hey, refrain from using it. The go-live date will be announced announced and it'll it'll state that on top of the containers as well. Now there's been a, a, a lot of discussion about how easily these carts are going to be able to be moved and maneuvered. Talk a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of uh, fear of how bulky and heavy these things are, but they're surprisingly very maneuverable um, and, and very accessible, right? So I mean they're easy to use plastic lids, so they're very easy to lift up and, and place your waste inside of. Um, and and 
contrary to you know regular or popular belief, it is easy to move and easy to roll out. If there is somebody with a, a disability or, or um, uh, limited movement, um, we are mobility, we can, uh, through the city, certify their container as a handicap stop. That will allow our driver to actually go out to the house, roll it down to the street, service it, and place the can back. So this system is something that Republic uses in communities all across the state and the nation, correct? It is, yeah. So uh, St. Angelo is one of the fewer people that still does the rear load cleanup uh, style, uh, manual uh, rear load style. So. Yeah, across the nation, these types of containers are being used uh, every day for use, and they're adequate. Um, they were designed according to you know usage. A lot of studies done on how much volume uh, a regular household produces. So that's what these cans are based off of. And when you launch these new services, are you going to phase in where this happens, or is it going to all be done in one fell swoop? Yeah, so the contract allowed us to implement a route, which is about every thousand homes, every two weeks or every 14 days. We have decided to go live across uh, the city. So every resident starting day one uh, will be able to implement the trash and recycling. So instead of taking a 30 week rollout period, we are gonna do it all with, we'll deliver all the carts the four to five weeks and then go live and then going forward, we'll, we'll be doing once a week trash, once a week recycling. And so the plan is, is that if your trash is currently picked up, let's say on a Monday or a Thursday, one of those days will be your designated day, correct? That is the goal. That is the goal. Little little simplicity. So both cans will be placed on, on the same day. Um, so you don't have to remember, well, it's Monday trash day and Thursday recycling day. But if your current service is Monday, Thursday, which you get twice a week, we are trying to allow your day to be either Monday or Thursday so that you're already kind of mentally trained uh, on what your service day is, so, so that should help with that. And how will folks know which day is their service day? So they can refer to the City of San Angelo website, the Solid Waste Department. Um, there is actually going to be an interactive map that will be effective uh, mid-April uh, where it will show all the trash and all the recycle routes and also the quarterly bulk bulk routes will be there. So each home will get two cans. One's going to be green, one's going to be tan. Correct. Talk about what goes into the tan carts. Okay. Tan is your is your waste, your 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 trash. So uh, I, I call it petrucible waste. So most of your household waste, the things that can decay, your food waste, um, the stuff that can't be recycled, the glass, um, the the plastic single-use bags, uh, the um, uh, garden hoses, electrical cords, um, those things can't be recycled. So if you're not going to take them to safe, um, that that's the stuff you put in in the tan cart, yard waste, that that type of those types of items. And then talk about what goes into the green containers. Sure. All your typical recyclables, right? So you got your paper, your plastics, uh, your your aluminum cans, your tin cans, which are like little, the food cans, um, the um, cardboard, um, just pretty much anything along those lines. And, and it'll actually be stamped. The recycle uh, lid, the cart will have a lid that has the do's and don'ts, what can and can't be recycled, some picture uh, references that they can see every time they open the lid. So right now, most people would think that glass and your single-use plastic bags would be recyclables. Talk about why that's not a possibility for the moment here in San Angelo. Sure. Part of it is the system, the manual sort, and the market for those materials. Um, there's not much of a market for the materials of the plastic bags or the glass. It's very, it's very expensive to process, and the manual sort facility that Butts is establishing, um, you know, take glass, in, for instance, um, requires a lot of manual sort. So broken glass trying to sort by hand is an obvious safety concern. Um, plus, the, there isn't much of a market for it. Um, so it actually costs more to try and get rid of through recycling than it would uh, the disposal costs at the landfill. Now, Safe Recycling still accepts glass. They still accept the, the plastic bags, so there's still an outlet for those materials. And Safe Recycling, which is at 702 Warehouse Road, they don't charge you anything for dropping things off at their center, correct? That is correct. Yeah, they've been they've been part of the city for uh, I guess over 30 years. Uh, very paramount to the to bringing curbside recycling to the city. You know, they've been pushing the environmental conscious uh, movement long before uh, a lot of us ever even consider it. So, uh, what they do is amazing and, and very uh, necessary. Even with a curbside recycling program, they offer um, to accept other materials that that um, just just 
don't work with a, a recycling program. Now, one of the things that people have uh, raised a lot of questions about is where they place their carts uh, when it's their service day. Talk about that. Sure. <clears throat> so the curbside recycling program is just that, right? So we want all the carts on the curb. Uh, the majority of, of uh, uh, the collection will pr pretty much stay where it is, right? So um, where the, wherever the majority of the garages are on that street, that's where the cans will place. If it's in the alley, then it'll be placed in the alley. If the garages are on the front street, then it'll be placed out front. You want the wheels on the back of the curb um, so that the truck can go in and access it very, very easily with its automated arm, separated from mailboxes, parked cars. Um, you know, it's a, it's an elect, it's a, it's a, uh, um, a hydraulic arm that's all automated, so it, you can't control it so tight. If there's a gas meter or, or, a, or a fence post or a parked car there, you have to be conscious of, about putting uh, putting enough distance between the can and those uh, those items those objects and if memory serves me correctly three feet from one another the carts need to be or from any uh, tree or or structure such as that and five feet away from any parked vehicle that is correct yeah and that will also be placed on the lid as well so you can kind of see a visual reference so how will folks know for certain where it is that they're going to be placing uh, their uh, their carts. Is there going to be some information provided for them in that regard? There will. We'll have some flyers, but we will try. Our attempt is when we deliver the containers that we're going to put them exactly where we want them to be on service day. Um, so as as those containers are be delivered, if they take note of where we placed it, that will be where they'll be serviced once the implementation begins going forward. We're talking with Ray Grothhouse. He is the General Manager of Republic Services, and we're going to continue this discussion in just a moment. But first, we're going to take a look back at this year's San Angelo Stock Show and Rodeo.
We're continuing our conversation with the General Manager of Republic Services, Ray Grothaus, about the new services that Republic Services is going to be instituting come July. We're talking a little bit about where people uh, place their carts when it, for, for their service day, for their trash pickup. Talk about when those carts need to be where they need to be. Sure. Um, so seven by 7 a.m. on their service day. Um, typically what a lot of people do, we'll put it out the night before. Um, if you're not up by 7 a.m. So um, sometimes you might get your collection regularly at 2 p.m., but there may be a route change. So if you're consistently putting it out by 7 a.m., it'll be ensured that we're not missing it. A lot of people are asking, well, what do I do with the cart after it's been emptied? Yeah, so it, it is city ordinance, I believe, to bag your trash and also remove the container from, from the city street. So uh, you want to be sure to um, remove those from the street after it's been emptied to put it up by your house or by the garage or in your garage in some cases. Some people might like to store it there. I know Republic has done some pilot testing of this system in some neighborhoods, particularly in the Bentwood neighborhood, and then you followed up by surveying the residents who have, who have gotten those services. What has the response been of people who already have this sort of service? in place? Very positive. Um, you get a lot of, uh, you know, uniformity on, on garbage day and it reduces litter, having everything in a container like that um, and, and all positive feedback that we get. Um, initially, you get you always get a little kickback um, and, and we'll, we'll experience it with this implementation, but um, overall very positive. When you say there's less litter, is that because there are lids on these containers as opposed to if for instance, in my house, the garbage cans, we don't have lids on any of those. Right. So what you get with uh, containers that don't have lids is you get animals that get in there, you get windblown waste, some people that might not have bagged their trash. It just, you know, with our West Texas wind, it, it does um, displace that some of that waste. So this allows the lids, if there's a broken lid or a broken container, we replace it. Um, so it ensures, you know, it's rainproof, it's kind of reduces the odor because of the lid and also minimizes the litter. And, and of course each customer is going to get two 96 gallon carts and we actually recycle at our home and we separate the the waste from the recyclables. I think people are going to be really surprised at how much recyclables they do have in their home. Yes. Yeah, it, you can you can definitely recycle almost everything in your home. You know, the food waste, but it really begins when you go shopping, right? So when you go out, you shop, you want to buy cans instead of bottles. You want to buy, you know, uh, paper instead of styrofoam or plastic instead of styrofoam. Um, so you, you make those conscious decisions when you're shopping so that those items can be recycled. And what does that mean for the landfill when you have recyclables that are not ending up there? Well, it extends the life of the landfill and it also minimizes um, waste, right? So, I mean, we're burying a lot of a commodity um, and that's what recycling has becoming so, so popular and so necessary <clears throat> is raw materials are becoming harder and harder to find and more and more expensive. So having a, a recycled product um, provides manufacturers and everything with another source of raw material. So if customers see that they <coughs> need more than the two cards, can they get additional carts? They can, yeah. And so this, the two cart system should be enough for the majority of families, but there are some homes that have, um, uh, you know, m multiple families living in there or larger families. Um, you can get a second trash cart or even a third trash cart for just an additional $5 a month. So, you know, just a little over a dollar a week, uh, you get another half a yard of disposal. So this is sort of the first step in our Republic and the city's effort in order to inform and educate the citizens about what these new services consist of and how they're going to work. Talk about what else we have planned in order to help uh, educate and inform people about their new trash services. Sure. <clears throat> I think that's going to be very key to the success of the recycling program is the educational push. Um, we've we've kind of delayed some of it because of the the the, the MRF for the recycling facility not being ready. But you're going to see very soon all of the efforts that we make with the print, with the media, uh, with social media, with radio, TV. Um, we're, we're going to be just about in every format. Uh, we hope to reach every citizen. Um, on top of that, we will hold six town hall meetings. Uh, our intent is to have one town hall meeting in every single member district. We'll invite the, the council member to attend. Um, those dates will be released so that people can um, have the, um, uh, the opportunity to attend those. Um, and there'll be open dialogue, we'll have some material, we'll do a presentation. Um, so they'll be very informative sessions. I also want to note that the city has a website dedicated to solid waste. It's cosatx.us 
slash solid waste. And we've also, as of today, launched a new web page, costatx.us slash recycling, so people can learn about the recycling uh, right. services. Let's talk about another service that you're already offering that is fairly new. Uh, to San Angelo, and that is free quarterly uh, bulk pickup. You've been doing that for some months now. Talk about that service, free quarterly bulk pickup, and how that works. Sure. So yeah, that service was implemented in October. Um, I think you'll see the biggest benefit once we go to this full impl implementation of the containers. People will need larger items disposed of. Um, so the city um, negotiated in the contract to allow us to go by every three months will go by every single home. So what that means is four times a year, you'll be able to place a bulky item, bagged yard waste, bundled um, branches. Um, if you got a couch, if you got big furniture that needs to be thrown away, um, you can do that. And you'll place that waste on, on the week of your uh, collection um, by the same place you get your trash collected. Um, right now, some of it is in one place where when the implementation takes place, that might move, so just be conscious of that. Um, but you can find that interactive map on the website you referred to or by calling us at 325-481-7700. Now, I know that you have a limit of five cubic yards for those of us who can't picture exactly how much waste that would be can you give us an example? Sure. Um, I think we, we equated it to like five washers um, or, or two couches. Um, I think you could, I think it's like five or six mattresses. So it's a lot of waste and that's four times a year um, that, that we offer that service. And what if you need something picked up at a time where it's not your time to have your quarterly bulk pickup? Can you get uh, those sort of items picked up by Republic Services? We do offer a, what we call an out of cycle bulk pickup. And you can do that by calling our, our office at the number I, I mentioned before, the 481-7700. Um, and we can, it's priced all based on volume. So how much you need to be collected, um, we'll, we'll uh, set the rates accordingly. You've built also a uh, citizen's customer or convenience center at the landfill. What is that exactly? So it is just a, a big concrete structure with, uh, with uh, uh, fencing um, that's designed to uh, really intended for safety purposes. Um, it is designed currently all the, all the private haulers or, or the citizens that come to the landfill to dump on, on the Saturday or whatever the case may be is commingled with the commercial traffic. This will allow them to stay away from all of the traffic. Um, it'll allow them an outlet for each material, whether it be yard waste or recyclables, like a, like a, uh, a washer, you know, a metal object, or just their trash. Um, so they'll they'll be away from all the heavy traffic. We'll have a worker there that'll assist them and spot them where where they're where they're supposed to dump. Um, it's kind of a state of the art facility, so we're very excited about that. Um, uh, and and you know it should be under construction in the next month or two. And so in essence, it's a it's a safety. Uh Thing that you're addressing there by keeping people away from commercial traffic. It definitely is. Yeah, we have we've been we've been fortunate and blessed not to have any accidents out there, um, but this will just ensure the safety of the citizens by by and also convenience. So, you know that's what it's called, the citizens convenience center. So it just it's be right next to the scale house, so they'll pull on. I mean they'll barely be off of any pavement, um, and and they'll be able to dump and then turn right back around. So it should um, expedite their their experience at the at the landfill. Can citizens still drop off a monthly load for free at the landfill? They can. On top of the quarterly bulk pickup, if somebody has something like an out of cycle, but they just say, oh, I'm going to take it to the landfill, all they need is a water bill and their valid ID, uh, their current water bill and valid ID, um, and they get a free disposal once a month at the landfill. And that uh, that water bill and that ID just is proof of residency within the, uh, the city of San Angelo, just proving that you're already paying for that That's service. correct. That's our form of payment. So when you when you provide us the water bill, it's it's that's our payment that we accept for y'all to dispose. And you have one other service at the landfill. You offer free mulch. We do, yes. Uh, so if a citizen needs it for their yard or any spring cleaning, we do offer free mulch. Uh, right now it's in a certain location that we're also one of the convenience centers built. We're going to bring it up to a much uh, much more convenient location for the citizens to, to load what they need. So do you get a lot of citizens who, who come out to the landfill and uh, dispose of their waste out there as it is right now? We do. Uh, participate 
participation is very high. Um, so especially spring clean, fall clean, you, you get you know you get the natural seasonal uh, trend of people cleaning up around the house. You mentioned earlier that you're going to be partnering with Butts Recycling and you're going to be partnering with the San Angelo Friends of the Environment or SAFE. Talk a little bit about those partnerships. Yeah, we are very excited uh, about the partnerships with the local uh, local businesses, people that have been uh, paramount, like I mentioned earlier, uh, on bringing recycling to the forefront of the community, um, affording us the opportunity to offer the service. If it wasn't for Butts Recycling, um, doing the massive renovations to accommodate the single stream recycling uh, facility, you know, we wouldn't have an outlet for that material. Um, so it's very necessary um, uh, and, and really exciting. Uh, um, it's like like we mentioned, it's one of the first um, first cities to do the single stream curbside in West Texas. So we're kind of trendsetters in that respect. Safe has been doing wonderful things um, for for many many years, and that will that will continue on. We're, we are one of the biggest supporters. Um, they take a lot of the materials that aren't going to be accepted in the single stream. Um, so uh, you know we we support them and encourage anybody to use their facilities um, because they do uh, uh, as well as the electronics recycling. It's one of the big things they do. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a, a semi-annual recycling event uh, for electronics at their facility on Earth Day and uh, America Recycles Day. And just want to mention one more time that uh, the city has set up a website, coastatx.us slash solid waste and coastatx.us slash recycling in order to try to answer as many questions as possible that citizens might have about these new services. But if they have questions for Republic Services, what's the best way to, to contact you guys? Absolutely. <clears throat> so if they call us directly, our customer service department will help them walk through any questions they may have. And that phone number is 325-481-7700. We've been talking with Ray Grothaus. He is the General Manager of Republic Services, and we hope you'll join us for the next episode of The City.